What's up, good people? And I am back to conversate with you. Find out what's real, what's not real. What do you believe about yourself, about your community, and so much more. So, let's get into it. ISIS and Osiris are the good guys. They are elementally good gods, want to do well. Nephthys also, their sister, is a good goddess. But Seth is elementally evil. He is the archetype of the devil, only tries to do harm. Now, according to the myth, Isis and Osiris come down to Earth to civilize Egypt. Now, remember when we talked about prehistory? What does civilization mean? It means domesticating animals. It means raising crops. So we learn that the origins of civilization, domestication of crops and animals, comes from Egypt. Right? Egypt is the source. At least that's what the Egyptians said. Now, Isis and Osiris do such a good job of civilizing Egypt, bringing civilization to the people of the Nile Valley, that Osiris goes away to teach the rest of the world how to do these things. So we get the diffusion of civilization from Egypt to other lands. Now, while Osiris is away, Seth tries to do horrible things to Egypt. But fortunately, Isis is very powerful. She is the goddess of magic. She is even called she who knows all the names. Now, what that means is, if you wanted to do a magic spell against somebody, I would have to know your name. So I could say, may this happen to Megan, for example. May this happen to Marvin. Now, Isis knows everybody's name. When an Egyptian kid was born, they often had two names. One was the real name. And only his mother knew that name. The other name was the name that everybody knew. So, according to the professor, in layman's terms... We've been using nicknames <laughs> since the since since pyramids, man. <laughs> like really, I mean, think about that. We we go about we go about our daily lives. You know, we have kids. Okay, your name is Daniel, but your street name is Peanut. Only the people closest to you know your real name is Daniel. Everybody else know you as Peanut. But this ain't something that we just started since we got to America. This is something that we've been doing since pyramids. It's in our DNA. It's in our bloodline. Regardless of what tribe you're from. It's all one big African nation. I, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. We are who we are. And we need to accept this. Continue. So, for example, if we name you Marvin, but we really call you Harry, everybody knows you by Harry. And if somebody tries to do an evil spell on you and says, oh, may Harry break his leg, it won't work because your name is really Marvin. So, Isis, as having the name She Who Knows Everyone's Name, means nobody is out of her range. She is the superhero. So, Isis, who is powerful, keeps her evil brother Seth in check. Nothing terrible happens to Egypt. And then Osiris returns, having civilized other countries. Now, Seth, though, is always scheming. Huh. And he lays a plan. Really? While Osiris is sleeping, while his brother is sleeping, he takes his exact measurements, his bodily measurements, and he builds a wooden chest to those exact proportions, exactly to the proportion of Osiris. And at a banquet... He says, I'll give a wonderful prize to anybody who fits exactly into this chest. And guest after guest tries, doesn't quite fit, it's a little big, a little small. And it's very much like Cinderella's slipper. And finally, Osiris tries. And it fits him just right, of course. But Seth is ready. And he nails the chest shut, pours molten lead on the chest, and throws it into the Nile. And Osiris dies in the chest. Now, interesting, by the way, 
There is no contradiction involved in someone being a god and dying. He is a god greater than man, but mortal. So in the chest, Osiris dies. But the myth doesn't end there. The Nile flows northwards to the Mediterranean. And the chest washes ashore on the island of Byblos, modern Lebanon. And according to the myth, there's this huge storm. And the chest is blown into the branches of a tree with dead Osiris's. Now, the tree grows to tremendous proportions, encompassing the chest in the trunk. The king of Byblos wants to build a palace, and he needs large trees. Cedars of Lebanon, he needs large trees <laughs> for pillars. And this tree is cut down and incorporated into the palace. Wow. It becomes a pillar. So we get the strange situation of Osiris in a chest and a pillar in a palace. <laughs> but that's the way it is. But... Isis, the devoted wife, sets out die. on a journey to recover the body of her husband. She eventually finds out where Osiris is in this pillar in the palace, talks to the queen of... Okay, so, according to the myth, Isis is determined to go find her man. And hell be damned if she don't find him. Where did we fall off? When did black women decide that they weren't going to be bothered with black men, with Negroes? We've been doing this since pyramids. So why the change? They were, black women were some of the most powerful, well-respected women in all the earth. And that's just my opinion from what I'm hearing. So why would you allow somebody to tell you anything different? Why would you subjugate yourself to somebody else when you already had everything you needed and wanted? It was yours for the taking. Just like Isis, somebody stole something from her, and instead of her groveling to her brother, oh, please, please don't do that, she kicked his ass, kicked his behind, and she set off to go find her man. She's the queen. She ain't playing second to nobody. So even though it's a myth, there's a lesson to be learned in this myth. You know, it, Osiris might not be a real person, but in the context of the story, there's a lesson to be learned. That's all I'm saying. Biblos gets a job as her handmaiden, talks to the queen, and explains, my husband is in this pillar in the palace. The queen is sympathetic. The pillar is cut down. The chest is taken out, and Osiris is indeed there, dead. Isis brings the body back to Egypt for proper burial. But Set, always scheming, finds the body. He finds the properly buried body of Osiris and hacks it into 13 pieces. Scatters them up and down the Nile. There are different places where different pieces are buried. Isis wanting to give her husband the proper burial finds the pieces she is aided by her sister Nephthys who wants to help they find almost all of the pieces of Osiris the phallus is missing it was thrown into the Nile and devoured by fish actually it's interesting they even in the myth the name of the fish the name of the three fish that devour the phallus is given it's quite interesting because the fish are electric mildly electric so I think they were special. So anyway, the phallus is devoured, but Isis finds the other 12 pieces, reassembles Osiris, fashions an artificial phallus for Osiris. So he's complete. Says magical words and breathes life into Osiris. She takes the form of a bird. There are many scenes of her 
taking the form of a bird, hovering over her husband. And Osiris resurrects. He becomes the first person ever to resurrect. And as a resurrected one, he becomes the god of the dead. So Osiris is the god of the dead. In a sense, he's the first mummy. Now, what are we supposed to learn from this myth? I mean, supposed to listen carefully and get the message. Well, as I said, almost every funerary belief that the Egyptians had can be traced from this. For example, it is crucial for Isis to recover the body and bury it on Egyptian soil. That's why she goes to Biblos. There is something special about Egypt and Egyptian soil. This, by the way, is why the Egyptians never colonized. They never, when they conquered a foreign, foreign country, set up a big colony. Nobody wanted to die away from Egypt. You had to be brought back to Egypt, mummified, buried on the soil. So the first thing is, you have to be buried in Egyptian soil. Next, he was missing one part, the phallus. She creates an artificial phallus. You must be complete. Because if you're going to resurrect, if you're going to use this body again in the next world, you want it to be complete. So you have to have a complete body. This, by the way, was a practice that was followed by Egyptian embalmers. When a person died who had only one leg, who had a leg amputated, they would create an artificial leg, an early prosthetic device, but for the next world. So we're also learning that you have to be complete. Now. Okay, so we then went from ride or die to prosthetics. They were doing prosthetics. They were they created prosthetics way before we even knew what the word prosthetic was. So, to my Negroes, listen to the stories. Realize how great you are, how great our people were and still are. Since then, we as a community have accomplished a lot of things and other cultures have gotten credit for it. It, it, It's time to stop that. For real. No, no, no. No, we don't have to be hooligans. We don't have to sit up here and go to war in a physical, violent way. But we need to take back what rightfully belongs to us and be smart about it. No one person can do it by themselves. It's going to take all of us, or as many as we possibly can. So, uh, with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one.